let's talk about the art and science of beekeeping in the bee yard. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Rapaski, EAS certified master beekeeper and owner here at Meadowsweet Apiaries in Western Pennsylvania. My goal in producing this video series in the bee yard is to share with you some of the strategies and techniques that I use to manage my colonies on a season by season basis. We're gonna to cover topics such as varroa management, swarm management, single brood chamber management, queen rearing, and much, much more. I was introduced to beekeeping by my father at the age of four. Now, as an EAS certified master beekeeper, I've learned to see the difference between just keeping bees and managing my colonies. I wanna share with you some of my techniques and strategies to help you manage your bees successfully and become a better beekeeper. Stay tuned for a fun and informational video series. And welcome to the bee yard. Today, we're in one of my yards where I practice single brood chamber management. We're just coming out of winter. It's the first week of April. The bees are really working the nectar and pollen of the trees that are blooming around us. We want to take a look into this colony, see what is going on and take the next step in single brood chamber management. With single brood chamber management, the idea behind the practice is to keep everything into one single box. Typically eight or 10 frame deeps are what's being used. There's a lot of variation as to what you do after you keep those bees in one box. Ultimately, the goal is to produce lots of honey, minimize swarming, and produce some very healthy bees. So let's go into this colony and see what we have today. As I open up this colony, there's a few things that I'd like to point out how I manage. I keep all of my equipment on the hive itself. I utilize queen excluders. I have inner covers. And when I overwinter my colonies, I use a candy board that is filled with a hard candy with about 3% pollen and the rest sugar. This gives the bees a chance to utilize an emergency feed if needed. Now, ideally, we're going to have the entire deep filled with honey as they go into the winter. They, they live on that honey, they overwinter well, provide some insulation, but sometimes like we've had this past winter with the weather being a lot warmer than usual, they utilize a lot more energy. So they're going to consume some of this candy. So let's take a look and see what we have here. So as you can see here, my candy board is just filled with bees. They've consumed all of the hard candy, put two pollen patties on here a few weeks ago. Since they consumed the honey, I wanted to give them something additional just in case we had a, a spell of cold weather. So I'm gonna set this off to the side here for now. I'm gonna do a quick cursory look to see if I can see a queen running around and I do not. There's a little bit of burr comb here, which I'm okay with, but we'll get into that a little bit later. I'm gonna take my pollen patties off. Set those off to the side. And what I see here is eight full frames of bees. There's just bees wall to wall here, which is fantastic. I'm gonna go in here and pull out a frame that's easy so it's not smashing bees or rolling the queen. Just so happens it looks like this uh, frame in the middle is a, a newer frame, so it's probably not drawn out as thick. And here we have a frame full of brood open brood, cap brood, little bit of everything, which is fantastic. No queen cells, which means they're not ready to swarm just yet. But I'll do a quick glance looking for the queen as usual. I don't see her here, so I'm going to set this off to the side. As I go further into the brood chamber here, again, I'm just looking for the status of this colony. Is there a queen present, eggs, larvae, that type of thing, and sure enough, I'm seeing more pollen coming in, lots of eggs, lots of cat brood, so we're good. I'm not gonna waste a whole lot of time looking for the queen at this point. I have a robust colony that's doing very well, so I'm gonna move to the next phase of my single brood chamber management. My strategy, because these bees are so robust this early in the year, and with swarm season potentially three weeks away, I wanted to take advantage of the strength that these bees have and have them draw out additional comb for me. What that will do is it'll allow me to take another box of bees off, produce a split, 
and continue on with single brood chamber management. So my goal here is to add a second deep hive body to this, allow them to draw out the additional frames, come back in a few weeks, harvest that box off, place a queen in that box, and now I've taken the strength of this colony, expanded it, took advantage of it, and created two colonies out of one, which is robust and could potentially swarm in the next few weeks, to allowing them to grow, removing or reducing that swarm urge. So, I've removed my one frame. I'm not gonna worry about these other ones. They're looking good, there's a lot of bees in here. I don't wanna disturb them too much. I have my extra deep here, so I'm gonna reach over, grab a undrawn black plastic frame. I'm gonna place that in the slot where the frame was that I removed. I'm gonna grab my second deep here. This is an eight frame deep. I really like to overwinter in eight frame deeps. They seem to do very, very well. Set that on there. Now what I'm gonna do is take the frame that I had removed from the bottom, and I'm just gonna place that right up here in the center of the deep box. Place my frames back together. And the idea here is to allow those bees to move up, take advantage of that empty space, and continue to draw out that comb. Now I still have to deal with all these bees from the inner cover. I don't want to be leaving the bees in like this. They will continue to draw comb, causing me a lot of issues. So all I'm going to do here, being very careful, because again, I don't know if the queen is here or not. I didn't look for her super close, but we're just going to shake them down in. Give them a quick tap. Get all the bees out of there. Place it off to the side. Now because here in western Pennsylvania we still might get a cold snap, I'm going to leave these pollen patties up above here just for another week or two just in case the bees need it. I'm going to take my inner cover which has a recessed bottom on it. Place that over top. I'll put my queen excluder back in here just for storage. Doesn't serve any purpose at this point. I'll place my candy board on here because again, storage, I don't need it at the moment. And I'll place my outer cover back on. We'll come back in a week or two, check the status of these frames and see how well they've been drawn out by the bees that were down below. Now the timeline for me coming back to remove this second box will vary. It depends on the strength of the colony, the amount of resources available, my schedule, those types of things. But ultimately in about three to four weeks, this new top box should be drawn out with lots of fresh young larvae, eggs, the queen doing her thing. I'm not going to worry too much about the queen at that point either, but we're going to talk about that in the next video. Stay tuned.